I like the melodic drummers like uh, Tony Williams and Jack DeJohnette and Paul Motion and um, that's kind of like I've always been interested in those guys who take a cell, you know, kind of like Bach, and then they expand it, you know, and then it becomes kind of a piece of music on the drum set. I think the simplest like way you can start by doing that is uh, give yourself limitations. I guess maybe limitations is the theme of the day because I'm so limited with uh, being able to only play with drums with one limb, one limb for instance. Um, so let's say you're going to take a drum solo here, okay, which maybe I'll do a little bit of or something. Uh, so pick a make a melody. Do the first thing, have the first thing you do be a simple melody. And then see where that takes you. Um, uh, so let's let's have this be our melody. <laughs> One, two, three, four. That's the melody. So that was like a simple solo, just starting with the simplest melody known to man, which is two, three, three quarter notes, right? And then just doing a call and response uh, with that in mind. And uh, that kind of, the melody will kind of inform you eventually kind of what to do next. And uh, I think the trick, the hardest thing about it is, mem is remembering what you improvised. Uh, and that's the thing that I think, uh, like the musical memory, it's just like having a long conversation with somebody, like an hour-long conversation, and referencing the thing that you talked about in the first five minutes. Uh, really good conversationalists are able to do that and tie in the entire conversation that you've been having. And that's a skill that you develop. And I think it's the same thing with the drums. Uh, with improvising is you develop you that muscle of, of memorizing what you um, improvised. So... Uh, Make up a sim write a simple melody like that. You know, it can be three quarter notes. It can be, it can be <laughs> three. It can be a, f a few eighth notes. It can be whatever you want. And then just try filling in the blanks with patterns that you've learned and stuff like that. But then see how it morphs because you can't just string together things that you've learned. You have to remember. Oh yeah, I have to go back and play that thing that I originally played. So it keeps you in that spontaneous state of mind as opposed to just paradiddle, paradiddle. Here's a figure I learned. You know. And it gives the listener something to latch onto. It's like, oh, that's not just a bunch of licks. That's like, you know, a composition, you know, which I think is more interesting personally. Dynamics are obviously really important in that, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. as it is in any conversation. Yeah. Um, I've got to go back and say I disagree with you, and I think Murray Spivak would and Freddie Gruber would too. You do know all your rudiments. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, because they would look at it as the way you're using your body and the way you're approaching the instrument, mm -hmm. and they're philosophy was, Murray for sure was, there's a single stroke, a double stroke, the buzz roll, mm -hmm. uh, paradiddle, grace notes. Yeah. And anything else you're playing is some combination of all those. That's so, true, yeah. So then so, I do know all my rudiments. So, yeah. Cool, thank you. <laughs> it's a big day for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a big day for us, too, because that's an interesting point, I think. Um, when drummers are improvising like that, um, mm -hmm. and the idea of, almost like you're saying, creating not just a conversation, but almost an orchestration or a song. Mm -hmm. um, when you're playing in a band setting, mm -hmm. um, are you thinking of the actual song? Um, I, I talk to, uh, I play a lot of jazz, you know, modern jazz, um, and a lot of improvisational music. Kind of the last 10 years, I've basically only played improvisational music. Um, and I think people tell me that the, a lot of the reason that they like me and um, other drummers who play multiple instruments is you just understand the uh, what it you know the emotional impact of harmonic changes and uh, so you can kind of understand technically the kind of the contours of of the music better and you know the function of melody and all that stuff and you're just kind of outside of the drums you're kind of seeing the whole you know orchestration so you know like Jack DeJohnette's a great piano player for instance um, 
And you can really hear that in his playing. You know, you can really hear that he understands harmony. He has that richness in his sound, and he can he can improvise on a splash cymbal for like 20 minutes, and it's interesting. You know, so um, I think for me, all of my favorite, a lot of my favorite drummers are multi instrumentalists, and uh, I can usually hear that. And a lot of it is again how they interact with other musicians. It's not from a drummer's perspective as much as it is from a musician's perspective. You know, you know. So I think it's a big difference. And like you're saying, as a career path for young musicians in the future, it's almost going to be a necessary knowledge. I, I mean, I think, I hate to say that, but I, I think uh, it's definitely evolving, you know, uh, and it can't hurt. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think every drummer would wish the converse also, that whatever instrument you might be playing, that you can play a little bit of drums. <laughs> right. That's true. And, and you know what? A lot of my friends who are top level uh, on their instruments outside of drums are can play the drums a little bit or want to learn or, you know, are kind of studying, so. Well, your knee body bandmates. Yeah, a lot of them can play drums either, like Shane is a phenomenal drummer, the, sax, the trumpet player, um, and then everybody else can play on some kind of level and kind of are always interested in it, so. Well, improvising, very important for young musicians, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, and don't worry if it sounds good or bad. There's yeah. no bad. Right. If you're improvising, it's what you were doing at the time, and that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, improvising is just having a conversation. I, I think the easiest way to get people to, to feel comfortable with music is to think about it just as conversation, you know? And you're improvising when you're having a conversation on a topic, and that's just what's gonna happen if you keep improvising on your instrument. Eventually, it's just gonna feel like, oh, we're just chilling, having a conversation. You know, it's not like, oh, technically, this is really hard. It's like, no, it's just, you're hanging out. So that's how I think about it. One of the things I used to do with beginning drum students way back in the day was uh, to get them to play their first rock beat, they'd get that together to get them to play their first fill, I'd just say, What's your name? Mm -hmm. uh, it's Don Lombardi. I said, okay, you mean like Don Lombardi? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay, well, just play, play your name in, in between the beats. Okay, Don, da da da. Well, right. and they're playing a fill and they have no idea. <laughs> right, exactly. And it takes That's the whole perfect. fear away of like, what, what is this? I can do it. Right. Uh, thank you for you know, this insight. Uh, what you've done and how you've mastered this, I'm going to ask you more questions about that and we're going to do that in just a couple of minutes. Cool. Thank you, Nate. Right on.